Hello, everyone. I am uh, Fyodor Lyakhov, and today we are going to talk about uh, uh, major redirection and then our new project, Melange, uh, for optimizing uh, major stream processing for uh, virtual desktop infrastructures. So it is uh, kind of uh, in the middle uh, of uh, different technologies uh, for uh, virtualization uh, and media processing and also uh, remote computing of different kinds. So uh, a few words about us. So <coughs> we have just started this project. Uh, it is really new. Uh, currently there is a team of three developers. Uh, one of them uh, is me. Another one is Igor. He will be helping me today. Also, Alexei, he, he's not here. Uh, so, uh, the project is hosted at GitHub, you can see it. And currently, uh, the work is sponsored by a Russian company, <laughs> Mir. So, uh, probably you have never heard about that company, but a few words, just a few words. So, this is a Russian software and these services company, quite a big, as you can see. And so it is uh, providing services for various uh, components over the world. So if any questions, you can, can ask me. OK. So uh, we will be talking about uh, media processing in virtual desktop environments and how to optimize them. So first of all, we want to show the, uh, we want to <coughs> identify what we are talking about. So uh, use cases for major processing. Uh, first of all, it is a creating and playing of local media content. And the second kind of uh, use case is, is remote media content, like user playing a video from YouTube. The next one is uh, telecommunications. It is really important and uh, uh, fairly different from the others. So we will be focusing on the last two. The first one is, is covered by different technologies, actually. I can mention them later, but we will be focusing on the remote media playback and uh, telecommunications. Okay, <clears throat> uh, then I want to give you a, a short overview of the uh, Red Hat Spice. Uh, we will be talking about Red Hat Spice because it is the most prominent uh, open source uh, remote dis uh, uh, virtual desktop, uh, virtual display solution, I would say. Uh, <clears throat> other uh, virtual displays like VNC and probably NX, uh, uh, they also probably can be covered, but I will be just talking about Spice today. So this is how Spice is uh, uh, working. The, the system is based on uh, uh, hypervisor uh, Linux KVM. Uh, the virtual machine is uh, running uh, QMU. Uh, Spice the server is running inside. Uh, so in, in the red, the Spice components are shown. Spice server uh, is running uh, inside uh, the context of the virtual machine and exposes uh, itself to the Spice client, uh, which is connected to a Spice protocol. So also, also there is a Spice agent that's a guest, and some uh, virtual drivers involved like QXL for enhanced uh, video enhanced video drivers, so. Uh, so let's look how the playback of uh, remote media happens in the VDI and what problems we can see here. So here we see the virtual machine and the simple media player installed there with the media engine component uh, highlighted in red. So when user wants to play YouTube on his virtual machine, it connects. Uh, probably via HTTP, uh, the player connects and uh, the media is played locally by that player and uh, <laughs> played decoded uh, into the uh, virtual devices and drivers. They handle then, then handle it and get it to the Spice server, which then encodes it once again as all this happens at the host. And the media is then transferred over a Spice channel to the Spice client and then once again and decode it and play it out. So we see that is not uh, very efficient. Next one, it is even worse. It is a, has a YP system and a VDI. So if we just install a soft phone at the virtual machine, 
and have some VIP system like SIP, uh, proxy, or whatever. Uh, then uh, we can see that uh, media is not uh, tra traveling peer to peer anymore, it is traveling to media engine and the virtual uh, machine, and then again it's transcoded. And the same <coughs> media path is uh, from uh, the opposite direction from the microphone of, this, of the client, and then it is uh, going in the opposite di direction. It is also non-optimal. So we can <coughs> highlight current uh, following problem here. So there, it is sometimes called higher pinning effect. So media streams are passing through the virtualization server, not peer-to-peer. -peer. And also this, the streams are transcoded at the server. Transcoded, uh, it can be allowed to just uh, uh, increases the CPU load and, the, and decreases the VM density of this uh, uh, virtualization server, but uh, the, the main part is that streams are passing through the virtualization server, so increases the network load and most uh, worst effect, it is increased latency, jitter, and maybe packet loss if these networks are unreliable. So if, uh, for example, the virtualization server, the client, and the far end all the, are located in different uh, places, few um, hundreds of kilometers away of each other, this, is, this becomes very ineffective, and for example, VoIP solutions uh, stop working. Okay, so how this uh, situation is addressed, actually. So there, this is a well-known problem for at least VoIP guys. And there are custom solutions. Most of them, uh, as I are aware of, they are proprietary solutions. Uh, I do not want to name them <laughs> here. It doesn't really matter. So this is a generic scheme of uh, such solution by uh, VoIP vendors. So they in introduce uh, two soft phones, one at the client side, another one at the guest. So the guest one, it is shown to the user and provides user interface. The client uh, one is actually handling all the signaling and the media, and they are uh, keeping in, uh, in, uh, in, they are keep, they, both, both soft phones are kept synchronized uh, via some kind of CTI, computer telephone interface, and so, that is a, uh, usually a proprietary system, and it is very custom, it is, it is not general, and that's why we want to introduce something different. That is a mid media redirection concept. So as you can see here, this is uh, displayed for the uh, VoIP case, but for audio uh, media, media player it is the same. So. As you can see here, we introduce uh, uh, media engine stops for the soft phone, and this media engine stops implement uh, that uh, API, but uh, not the actual media engine, but using it some kind of RPC client, which is then uh, sends this control, rather control information, to the RPC service located at the client. Uh, the data is sent via virtual channel. Uh, inside the SPICE protocol. For this case, or if it is not SPICE, something else can be used. So, and the actual media, media engine is located at the uh, client. It is then con controlled by the RPC service, and the media pass is peer-to-peer -peer again. So this is a solution we, we propose for this uh, uh, problems. And a few words about video here. So video is com more complicated than audio because, uh, because we need to uh, display the video on top, of, uh, on top of the virtual screen of, uh, of, uh, of the Spice client in this case. So for this case, we need some kind of overlay renderer API in the client. It is uh, one kind of Solution. Probably there are different ways to embed the output of the local video into this, uh, into this uh, virtual screen. So this, uh, this scheme shows how it can be done in general. So 
So what, uh, what is done now? That was, that was only a concept, but now we, we want uh, to show you that what we have done so far. Basically, we have two proof of concepts for, for this. First one, called prototype A, it is an audio player. And basic audio player uh, from GStreamer examples, basically. Hello World from GStreamer. If uh, you are familiar with GStreamer, you <coughs> probably know that there, are, there is high level play, uh, play bin API, some, some, something like that. So uh, this uh, <coughs> API like, creates a play bin uh, and uh, attach a message handler for, for the bus of that play bin and also set uh, properties of that play bin like URI. This is, that was implemented in the GStreamer stubs uh, lab library, <coughs> prototype library, which is then converts these calls to debus calls. So <coughs> at the server side, uh, <laughs> at the client side, as a, uh, we are using uh, now the uh, Ridge Runs uh, uh, GSTD. This is a, a, a simple, fairly simple GStreamer <laughs> Uh, the bus daemon. Uh, it, it was. It is fairly old, uh, <coughs> written in wall actually. And uh, it is old. Uh, and that currently doesn't support the latest GStreamer. It is only uh, old dot ten GStreamer. So we need <laughs> to to port it uh, to new one, probably. But for now, <coughs> it is. It works still. There's uh, high level APIs in the. Is at the bus daemon. We used to implement that behavior. So. Effectively, what we have, we have an uh, audio player which can be uh, built from the same source. It can be linked either with a uh, local GStreamer library or via, with the GStreamer stops and work in this environment as it is shown there. So DBus is used here for uh, RPC. It is a really controversial, I would say, and uh, there, there, there are multiple concerns about DBus, but m multiple pro and contra against it. So for now, it is not a production level. So integration with Spice it hasn't been implemented yet. So we are using simple TCP circuit. So at the guest, uh, we open, the, we create the session, the bus, bus uh, uh, via TCP, not via Unix circuits, and connect the local service to it. And for the, we will show that in the demo. Another prototype, B, it is a soft phone. It is not a, a full-featured soft phone. It is a dem demo-only soft phone, which uh, doesn't actually do any signaling. It is very simple RTP, RTP streaming uh, soft phone. Oh, and it is a bug here. There, there is, it is not using GStreamer at all. It is based on uh, Google WebRTC uh, uh, internal, uh, low-level, uh, fairly low-level me uh, media engine APIs, if you are familiar with them. Uh, they, they are fairly good for implementing soft phones, actually. Yeah. So uh, that soft phone is kind of similar to that uh, audio player. It, can, uh, it works just the same. It can be linked uh, locally uh, with, uh, in one, uh, from the same source and can be built and linked with local uh, Google WebRTC media engine, or can be linked with the, the stops which are implemented, in this case, they are implemented using a P Apache Thrift uh, RPC system. It is a, another way, instead of Dbus, we can use the Thrift, and it has uh, some uh, good uh, sides, like being independent of all this Dbus desktop uh, uh, things happening now, <coughs> so we can control this infrastructure for our use cases, but it lacks features, like it doesn't have signals, it doesn't have actually services uh, in this sort of, uh, it doesn't have a kind of a bus or whatever. So it is limited. But it, it is uh, really good for the uh, proof of concept because uh, it is capable of generating all the glue uh, code and uh, we, we just need to <coughs> give it a, a file describing our services and we get the whole RPC stack back and use it, just implement the calls. So I'm going to <coughs> show you how it works. Probably it can be <coughs> not so very interesting, but 
Igor is going to help me with this. So we are going to show you how this soft phone works. So here, oh, I need to need to show you. There is a virtual machine. So as a local machine, I start that uh, service. Uh, so I started the. Uh, so basically, what we have uh, at one PC, we have a uh, basically it plays the role of a client and the, the host because we, <coughs> we do not have much uh, equipment here. And so at it, it, it there is a virtual machine running, and I'm going to start. I'm going to start a remote version of that soft phone. This, it has very simple test UI, but <coughs> what we can see here, it, it is capable of selecting uh, uh, clients, actually clients, audio devices. Don't have much of them today. So it, it is capable of playing, for example, playing a test on, uh, testing a microphone, for example, Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, yeah, I have a microphone muted because because for the next uh, stuff uh, I would, would like. So, so yeah, the test works also, and it is actually working uh, uh, via that thrifty uh, uh, RPC system. It is not. Uh, it is, doesn't have any media locally, so we can. Even start, for example. Oh, sorry. No. You can start the GNOME system monitor and to see the network usage. So you see that is <coughs> zero, basically. So if we, we, we now want to make a call. Sorry. So, to make a call, we need to enter the IP. Uh, pointer is not seen there for some reason. Okay. So, we have a local a wired network here between two laptops. One is here. So <coughs> yeah, it works. And you can see that there is no, oh, sorry. <laughs> so the streaming is continuous, but uh, that just audio is muted. But if you look here, it is a very low thref, uh, network usage, actually. It is not that uh, audio streaming. It is uh, actually something different happening here. So <coughs> that uh, audio stream is G711. Uh, it is about 10 uh, kilobytes per second, actually. So if we open the local, uh, the client, 
you can actually see that network usage is here. Yeah, about 12 kilo, kilobytes per second. So what is, that is uh, how this works. And basically, the same thing uh, works for audio player. I don't think I need to show it. Uh, all this code is available in the GitHub repository. You can check it out. Thank you, Igor. So I will continue with. OK, so what are our, are our next steps? So currently, we have uh, two demo-only uh, demo applications. And we, we are going to integrate them with Spice. This is the next major step. And also, <clears throat> the next step uh, would be uh, integrating with some real-world audio player, the streamer-based, and then some uh, real-world soft phone. Uh, for example, uh, probably we will go with telepathy uh, framework and soft phones based on it. It is already debus driven, so probably we would not need to do all this stuff uh, with our own, uh, without implementing any steps, probably. Also, there is a possibility to explore uh, the WebRTC in the browsers. So it is really kind of dark matter here. So, and also, of course, we need to work on the video part. It is harder because it's video overlay. It is the so next step. And also, <coughs> currently, we are focusing on Linux to Linux uh, communications in this case. But it is feasible to, to add Android for clients and Windows for clients and guests. Uh, okay, so there there are kind of um, questions, architecture questions I would like to raise because uh, we haven't decided on them yet, and so any input would be welcome, and any comments uh, about this. So we uh, have not uh, decided about on the RPC system. So would, uh, do we need to use DBus in this case, or do we need Thrift? Uh, or maybe we can go with both, but it is expensive. We are small and we are working as volunteers now, just slightly sponsored. <laughs> so uh, another question is uh, what backends to support? We start with GStreamer, but there are others like VLC. Probably need to look into it as well. I don't have any experience with it. Not sure whether it maps into this. So for GStreamer, it actually makes maps file available because at the high level API, the actual uh, implementation of the pipelines and so on happens at the, at the client side and it controlling uh, that uh, GStreamer via Dbus works fine, not generate much traffic. Another topic to discuss, it is the Spice API for uh, uh, additional virtual channels. So basically, Spice allows adding uh, new channels, but need to identify what channels do we need and what interfaces. At GIOS operating system, we, we see that we need a sh uh, shared lab library, but at the client side, it is not clear yet. And also, <coughs> we're rearranging an API. It is another open topic. <laughs> another uh, huge uh, topic, it is uh, uh, fault tolerance and uh, so uh, handling of the disconnects and crashes. It is all uh, needs to be handled somehow. Currently, if we go with Dbus, uh, we can have a service tab at the guest, which would take over the real uh, client side service in case of uh, disconnect. And then application media application will use that tab instead. Uh, so probably it is the way to go, at least if we go with uh, Dbus. And also a couple of other uh, questions like crash recovery if the media engine uh, crashes. We probably need to keep it in separate process. But then how we can uh, 
I organize the rendering of the video into the uh, window of another process. Yeah, it is also a good question. So I want to conclude what uh, we have done so far. So there is a problem for in the VDI with the media processing, and there are various solutions, but they are not ideal. And uh, what we uh, want, we, we have introduced the concept uh, how to redirect media uh, in using the uh, uh, open source components already available. And two prototypes we have, have shown only one, but the other one is also working. I can show it if, if uh, you're interested. So that's all. Questions? Okay, if any questions we can talk outside, of course.